So today we are going to discuss the cross sectional area, velocity and pressure in different parts of the circulatory system. So far we have discussed that the circulatory system in the human body is basically having two circuits, the systemic circuit and the pulmonary circuit. The pulmonary circuit is basically taking the blood to the lungs where it gets oxygenated and it then brings it back to the heart and then heart pumps it into the whole of the body except the lungs and where the tissues in the hu human body it consumes the oxygen and the nutrients and then uh, the deoxygenated blood comes back uh, to the right side of the heart and these circuits continue. We also discussed the amount of blood that is present in different portions of the circulatory system. We discussed that around 64% of the blood is present in the veins, around 9% is present in the lungs, around 7% is present in the capillaries and in the arterioles. But today we are going to discuss briefly uh, the, the estimated uh, cross-sectional area of the different components of the circulatory system, the estimated velocity of the uh, blood in different parts of the circulatory system and the pressure in different parts of the circulatory system. So first of all the area. If we consider the areas in different parts of the circulatory system we will see that if the cross-sectional area of the whole circulatory system is seen then we will see that the, the area of the aorta or the biggest largest artery of the human body it's around 2.5 centimeter square. So if uh, we we draw the circulatory system in simple as a simple diagram we see that the 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 portion of the or the the cross sectional area of the whole of the iota it's around 2.5 cm square then if we see the the small arteries the cross sectional area of all the arteries if they are put together it will make around 20 cm square Similarly, the arterioles will make the 40 cm square, 2.5, 20, 40, and then the capillaries will make 200, 2500 cm square area. The venules, they will have cross sectional area of 250, 250 cm square, around 250 cm square, and if we see here, the venules is having around 250 cm square. This diagram is basically showing that all the arteries, all the arterioles or all the venules or all the veins, if they are put together, they are combined together, like all the arteries are combined, the veins, the capillaries are combined and their combined cross-sectional area is calculated, then we will see that the capillaries, the capillaries is having the largest cross-sectional area. The capillaries is having the largest cross-sectional area. But if we compare the speed or the velocity of the blood in different components of the circulatory system, then we see that this velocity of blood in the aorta is around 33 centimeter per second. So the cross-sectional area of aorta is around 2.5 centimeter square, 2.5 centimeter square. But the velocity is around 33, the velocity of blood in this portion is around 33 centimeter per second. 33 centimeter per second. The same velocity of blood in the capillaries is around 0.3 mm per second or 0.3 millimeter per second. This velocity of blood in capillaries is around 1 by 1000. 1 by 1000 of the velocity of blood in the aorta. So the aorta it's around 33 centimeter per second but in the capillaries, the velocity of blood is around 0.3 millimeter per second. This basically tells us that when the cross-sectional area increases, here you see the cross-sectional area is around 200 and 2500 centimeter square. And here we have just 2.5 centimeter square. So the velocity is very much high when the cross-sectional area is low and the velocity is very much low when the cross-sectional area is large. So velocity of blood in a, in a part of circulatory system is indirectly proportional 
to the cross sectional area of that part of the circulatory system. For example, the cross sectional area of the aorta is less, so the velocity of blood in aorta is high. The cross sectional area of capillaries is large, so the velocity of blood in the capillaries is very much low. Now, if we compare the pressure of blood in different components or different parts of the circulatory system, we will see that the pressure of blood in the aorta is around 100 millimeter of mercury. It be, it's between 120 and 80 mm of mercury. The systolic pressure in the aorta is around 120 millimeter of mercury while the diastolic pressure in the aorta is around 80 mm of mercury. But the average pressure of blood in the aorta is around 100 mm of mercury. The same thing, the same pressure in arterioles, in the arterioles is about 35 mm of mercury. As we go deep into the circulatory system towards the peripheries, the pressure decreases. So here, here in the aorta, area was 2.5 cm square. Velocity of blood was around 33 centimeter per second and pressure was around 100 millimeter of mercury. Then in the arteries, which is having around 13% of the blood, its cross sectional area is around 20 centimeter square. In the arterioles, the, the, its cross sectional area is around 40 centimeter square and the velocity or the pressure of blood, the pressure of blood is around 35 millimeter of mercury but in the venules in the venules the cross sectional area is around 250 centimeter square and the veins is having around 80 centimeter square but the pressure in venules the pressure in venules is around 10 mm of mercury the pressure in the venules is around 10 mm of mercury or 10 millimeter of mercury so the capillaries basically is having 35 millimeter of mercury on one side on the arterial side and it's having 10 millimeter of mercury on the venule side the difference is around 17 mm of mercury 17 mm of mercury this 17 millimeter of mercury is basically the functional pressure which is exerted on the blood to and which is sufficient to push the nutrients out of the pores of the capillaries so that the nutrients can go into the interstitial fluid and the cells or the different type of tissues they can use the different nutrients and then the, the remaining waste material can come back to the capillaries. Now, if we compare the pressure in different parts of the circulatory system, we see that the pressure in the aorta is high, as we discussed, it's around 100 mm of mercury. But as we go further into the peripheries, the pressure may return to zero in the veins. So it's around 100, it's around 100 in aorta, and it decreases to around zero in the veins when it is being returned to the heart. So the pressure in the circulatory system decreases from the aorta towards the vein. Similarly, the pulmonary circuit is having is also having pressure. The pulmonary arteries are having a pressure of around 25 to 16 mm of mercury. The pulmonary pressure arteries are having 25 to 16 mm of mercury. This pressure in the pulmonary artery is very much low is compared to the pressure in the systemic arteries and the low pressure basically it makes sure that the whole of the blood that is going to the lung it's get it gets oxygenated so in this simple easy lecture we are basically comparing the cross-sectional area velocity and pressures in the different parts of the circulatory system we see that the aorta is having very low surface cross-sectional area while the capillaries are having very large surface area this is for aorta this is the surface cross-sectional area this is the speed velocity of the blood in the aorta and this is the pressure 
and we see that the area in the aorta is very low while area of capillaries is very much large but the velocity is inversely proportional to the area velocity of blood is very much high in the aorta while it's very much low in the capillaries because the cross sectional area increases the cross sectional area increases so the pressure the pressure of blood or the velocity of blood basically decreases and same goes for the blood pressure pressure in the aorta is high and it keeps on decreasing and the pressure on two sides of the capillaries on the arteriolar side and the venule side or the venous side it creates a difference of around 17 mm of mercury which is sufficient for this for the nutrients to be pushed out of the capillary pores uh, pores and it goes into the interstitial fluid similarly in the pulmonary circuit the pressure in the pulmonary arteries is very much low and it makes sure that the blood in the lungs gets oxygenated so that's very simple and easy lecture about the cross sectional area velocity and pressure in different parts of the circulatory system thanks a lot for watching the video